Hello and uh, welcome back to a new episode of the Fluke Friday. And this time I have the 233, the 233. Little disclaimer, this video is not sponsored by Fluke. These and these items are not original, but I made this for the purpose of this video because I'm a fan and of course because of the copyright. It will not be for sale. Fluke themselves compare it to the 170 series except with this extra magic uh, feature uh, because it has uh, also the temperature like the 179 uh, it has backlight uh, like the 77 and the 79 the 75 doesn't have that and the only thing is it has a little bit uh, lower accuracy the 179 and the 177 they have around uh, 0.9 and the 175 is 0.15% and this one is only 0.25 but there is maybe a reason for that and that's also because it doesn't have the milliamp setting uh, also so I would think it's more like automotive industrial that you don't need this very uh, low values uh, to read but what is this special feature why they even made this 233 version The 233, here is it, and I must agree, it does look a little bit like the 170. The, the shape is also like this. Uh, only the terminals are not in the sides, but in the bottom, uh, with the backlight, indeed, temperature. And yes, we are missing the milliamps. That's true, but what is the special function? Well, we can switch it on, like any multimeter. You can see here the light was flashing and it tried to make a connection. And why would that do that? Well, here it is. The meter has a remote head. And that is pretty cool. Look at this. The display is separated. And it is done with a radio connection. You can see it blinking. It is now using its RF connection. So it's radio frequency. And you can do about 10 meters with this. And it even has a magnet on the back, so you can just stick it in a place. If, like, if you're working on a heater, you need your probe somewhere inside, and of course you want to see the display. So this one you put then on the outside. Well, let me just put two volts. Ah, the connection uh, got lost. That is one of the problems that sometimes happens. Maybe the batteries are a little bit low and then the RF frequency doesn't work. So I need to switch it off. And if I try it again. Well, I seem to have a little bit of a battery problem in the, well, let's call it the base station. Uh, but you see, it is uh, quite uh, accurate. <laughs> And we should be able to take it off. So when it is docked, then it's using the infrared here. So then it will use less power. And when you undock it, it switches over to radio. And well, you can see, I can just change the values. It's very weird. <laughs> if I change the values, look at that. Go to 5 volts, even as backlight. Five volts. Tough, there it is. Kind of like the idea that you can separate the uh, display. And for certain applications, it, it even makes a sense, so it's not just a gimmick. Uh, yeah, let, let's say if you, as I said, in the heater, you just stick the magnet somewhere and you can leave your probes inside the device that you're measuring. And then just for safety, you need to close it again. You still have your display on top that you can actually see the values. So that seems to make sense. It is indeed more for industrial and automotive, I would think. Well, it looks very dirty at second hand. I would say it's used in automotive or at least heavy industrial. The lower values are not available. There is no 
uh, milliamp connection in the front. I think the lowest is 0.6 of a milliamp you can measure. So again, probably not electronics, but industrial. Also, I've been reading on some of the forums that it really likes a lot of batteries. So if you're not using it for a while, the, you need to take out the batteries because it will cost you a fortune at some point. The thing is that they try to keep it connected all the time. And when it is docked, it is using uh, when it is docked, it is using the the infrared that is here, and that is quite low power. But of course, when you take the display off, it needs to switch over to RF, which uses more power. Also, there is only one power button, so it is kind of communicated through the base station that the head needs to switch off because in the end, how, how can it know? There is no separate power button on the on the display itself. So some people made already modifications with little switches in it so it won't eat all the batteries. But if you just use it all the time, just make it, just, it is just a fact. Have some spare batteries with you. Well, just let's see how accurate it is. Maybe we can clean it up a bit. I like to open it. Also, I need to see why my base station sometimes loses the connection and maybe the batteries are not uh, well inside there. So uh, let's have a look. So let's quickly go through the things we can do. We have here, well, it's red, it starts to connect, it's connected. Uh, we tried already the voltage, it was almost put on. So it was almost spot on. I think it is 6,000 counts. So let's check that. And if we do one more, oh, it can even a little bit more. When we let's switch over. Oh, yeah, so it's 6600 counts even. It does have a millivolt setting. I think I have the two here. So if I go to one millivolt, we can go to this. It is by default in AC. Let's put it to DC. Yes, that works also. No problems in the millivolt settings. So let's go to the ohms. Uh, ohms here. Can it handle emulated ohms? Yes, it can. One hundred. The thousand is uh, usually spot on, and here also that I've seen that with all the fluke multimeters that the ohms is usually spot spot on. We can do also the amps. Let me go to the. Amps setting, yes, the leads. I need a, a lead here. Okay. Then milliamps, 4 milliamps, it doesn't. And it is blinking, so I don't have a loop. So, or it's dirty, or the fuse is probably already broken. Yeah, that doesn't work. If I put it to the AC. Same thing, we wouldn't see anything, but it's also not looping, so I'm missing there clearly. Clearly my fuse. I hope it's just that. It is true RMS, so we can have a look at that too. Just for the fun of it, let's try that like this. Uh, my DMM check plus, yeah, I should have powered it on before, but it is not that accurate. I, it is on AC, switch it on. So uh, let's see, do I have, yeah, it is a bit low because this should be exactly 4999, I think, but it is true RMS because otherwise it would have said 5.56 or something. I can try a higher frequency because that was 100 hertz and now it is 10k. Well. Apparently there is a filter also that it doesn't go 10k. That's good because then you get all the noise out. Yeah, that's good. It also has, oh, let's go back to the ohms. 
I have here some 1%, so 100 ohms. Yeah, 1k was spot on usually, yes. 10k, no problems. 100k, no problems. It has caps. Well, let's see. 1 nano, that is correct. 10 nanos, 100 nanos, and here we go, 1000 nanos or 1 micro. Yes, I indeed think that uh, that it, when it disconnected, it is a problem in the base. I moved the base uh, too much, and then the battery uh, well, didn't connect well because now I'm just playing all the time, but I didn't move the base. So we just need to have a look at the battery compartment of the base. And yeah, it's cool. I'm just turning in my power supply. The base station is just here, and uh, it just goes. I'm reading here on one of the forums. This is the element 14, and I've also seen on the EEV blog that um, some people, and while the meter was still in warranty, they sent it to Fluke, and the Fluke put uh, a firmware update in it. Well, this one is probably 10 years old, so I don't think it, when I send it they will do anything. But um, the, the update was for free, but you only need to pay for the shipping. And then it will consume less uh, batteries. Also, I've read in the manual that you can switch on some sort of sleep mode. Then it will also consume less batteries. And then you just need to remember, okay, I switch on the base station, the, the, the multimeter itself. And then I push later on the button on the display. And then it will take a little bit of time before they are connected. And then you can use it. Because if you switch it on like this, this was the idea. That's, that's why they developed it as they did. You just switch it on, display goes on, you can use it immediately, you don't need to wait until the base station and the display are connected. But of course the downside is, is the batteries. Well good to see the values are all still good. We need to have a look at the fuse, but we need to open it anyway. Oh, something cool about the, about the probes. It seems that I have the original probes. This is the TL175. And you can see, you can put the isolation like this. Now it has a higher rating than this. And you can see here in this little window when you turn what rating it has. Now it has a cut 3 rating, 1000 volts. And now it has a cut 2, 1000 volts. Pretty cool. <laughs> well, we haven't had a real good look. We can only see it is pretty dirty. It has a, it had a tough life. But I think the battery compartment is a, a problem. Well, now it is not. Oh, now it's using infrared. So if I take it out and I have the radio connection, then it sometimes just loses the connection. Now it's lost, it's blinking. But let's uh, open everything. Let's see how many batteries uh, are everywhere. So here we should have a battery compartment. Yes, we have the magnet is also here in the bottom. Two batteries going. Now, oh, here. Well, the batteries came out, including this little spring, so that is also gone. That is a pity. Hmm. That could really be the problem. Okay, I need to find out if I can maybe solder this in there to fix that. It indeed has a tough life, and I see even the screws are missing, so someone opened this already. Seems to have a buzzer. I didn't try the continuity test. The inside looks okay. The clips I can probably clean. So this is only a little piece of metal. Maybe I can take this out of another device. But I just tried to solder it, I think. Yes, I need two, two little screws here. Let's see what I have. 
for this. And it needs a clean, of course. So let's have a look at the base station. Here are also batteries. Open this. Ooh, look at this. This looks bad. So the batteries have been uh, corroding. Yeah, look at this. Ooh, that is not good. Uh, almost this will break also, so we need to clean that. Ooh, that's a real pity. Let's open and see how we are on the inside. Okay, that's good. The inside looks good. So it's only the batteries that, that seem to be a problem. So we can open it maybe a little bit more for the cleaning. The fuse we need to check if that's good or not. Because it didn't measure any amps. Okay, let's take the fuse out. No, must be a better way than this wrong screwdriver, but okay. Let's see. We are measuring. Uh, okay. Good, good, good. And the meter could be working. These fuses, uh, I think, are between 5 and 10 euros uh, each. But uh, yeah, maybe we have some China fake ones, or I just ordered from the Ailer shop. They also have them. Well, luckily, it's just a fuse or I hope it is a fuse because if you manage to uh, blow up your 11 amps fuse or you really don't know what you're doing or you just had that luck and you were measuring 12 amps and then luckily this one blew but it always makes me think with the base station here open yeah the battery compartment really doesn't look good at all maybe can we open this a little bit more? If not, I just put this in the dishwasher. Maybe the metal I can take out. I will try that carefully. These ones are not broken yet. But it needs definitely a big, big clean. And sometimes I just use the, the white powder, the Ajax or whatever it's called, FIM. GIF and uh, I can just clean this in the sink or in the dishwasher. First I try with alcohol just to get most of the oil off and then it probably needs to go in the bath.
So that took some time, but you can really see the difference. I was able to clean the battery compartments and to also the contacts. I soldered them again just with a little support wire. And that was just enough to make contact with the batteries. I even found two screws, nice black. I have this screw drawer which has like 100 and then thousands of screws all different. And I actually could find a pair. <laughs> and uh, yeah, nice and black. The polishing the display, well, huge difference. And uh, I also soldered in a fuse. I don't have this, uh, this original fluke fuses. I will order a few. Because sometimes I just buy them with a broken fuse like this one. Uh, but I soldered in now a big one, 10 amps, 10 amps fast. Just to be sure until I find the correct ones. So here it is. I think it looks a lot, lot, lot better. You can still see a little bit, but yeah, I couldn't get it much more clean. Just take, it's just a matter of time and then I just clean it more. But I think for now it's already a lot cleaner. Switches on, makes contact. Also, I there were two options I didn't show. That was the the diet mode and also the frequency. Because if we do AC, let me switch it to AC, power on. We should have about a five volts. Look at that. Ooh, the display really looks a lot better. And it can even see the frequency, 100 hertz or 10k, I think. Or 10k, if it is. So that works also. If you wonder about the diet mode, now here we also have the ohms and the continuity. Also works the diet mode. And how much voltage does the diet mode use? Well, it uses 2.5 volts. It's a bit low, usually they use 2.7. But it's probably enough. You need the temperature. I think we can change to Fahrenheit. Oh, not in this one. And then we have the amps. Does the amps work now? Well, let me see. Uh, milliamps. And of course, we need to put it into the, yes, 4 milliamps. So it does not get lower than 1 milliamp. Then that is also uh, solved. But glad that the amps work again. So that looks a lot better. And of course, it was, the whole thing was this that you have a separatable head. Pretty cool. So, and uh, I also cleaned the probes and they look amazing. And I like these, they are, the wires are really, really flexible and it's quite long, at least a meter. And uh, yeah, it's the TL175. I can recommend these. These are pretty nice. And uh, I was surprised they actually came with the meter. And they, uh, according to the brochure, this is what comes with the meter. So high quality cables for this well, reasonable, simple multimeter. If you look at the specs, yeah. Oh, I never saw one before until I ran into this one. And I'm glad it was a reasonable price because it, it didn't look that good. Of course, we needed to do a reasonable amount of work to, to get it uh, as it is in the state. And uh, 
yeah, happy with the result. Thank you for watching and hope to see you next time.